Sir. All right, we're going to call this regular monthly meeting of the Scarborough Sanitary District to order, and then we'll call the roll. We'll start to the right this time. Joe Carroll. Present. Ruth. Present. Jason. Here. Mike. Here. Tony. There. Ben. Here. I'm Nick. I'm your chairman, and I'm here too. Approval of the minutes. Thank you, Jason. Thank you, Joe. Any additions, subtractions, corrections? Barring none. All in favor? And we have a few abstentions. We have um, Ruth, Ben, and Joe. Oh, I'm sorry, Ruth and Ben. My mistake. He was probably so quiet at that last meeting. He was. <laughs> oh, okay. Uh, so uh, it's more the chairman's memory than anything else that's going on here. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, superintendent's report. Thank you. So. Uh, Copy of the monthly report of operations for the month of June is included in your packet. Our average effluent flow for the month was 1.63 million gallons a day. Our effluent quality was well within our permitted limits. We averaged 94% BOD removal and 98% TSS removal uh, for uh, average monthly concentrations of 16 and 6 milligrams per liter, respectively. Copy of the pump station's flows for the month of June is included in your packet. No concerns were noted. Shop drawings, uh, pump station uh, number two, the wet well upgrade that's currently ongoing. Shop drawings are currently being reviewed on site. Work is scheduled to begin early September. Uh, the new odor control for the wastewater treatment facility has arrived. Carl and Paul have prepped the area for the installation and the manufacturer is now on site uh, beginning the installation of that unit. Uh, we have been informed that Green Mile Solar will be going online mid-August. That is the solar farm that we uh, joined, I think, about 18 months ago uh, now. Soon thereafter, we will be, have a better understanding how uh, the, of the financial savings that the district will receive from that. But, um, I'm hoping that it will be fairly healthy. So uh, effluent PFAS results, uh, we received our July effluent PFAS results as conducted by the state. The total PFAS measured was 64.1 parts per trillion. Main DEP is now coming to end of this phase of effluent testing for PFAS. SSD has been asked to uh, participate in phase two, which is an in-depth community and process investigation. I did attach the email. Uh, the uh, preferred communities for the study included Anson Madison, uh, Lewiston Auburn, Portland Water District, East End Plant, South Portland, um, KST, Kenny Beck, thank you, uh, Greater Augusta Utility District, Camden, Scarborough, Bangor, Heartland, Rockland, and Bath. Um, so uh, I did inform BEP that we will be participating in that phase two part of the program. I did forward out an article that I just received uh, via email from the Bang Bangler uh, Daily mm -hmm. News uh, with regards to um, high concentration PFAS found in effluent. Uh, Scarborough was not one of the facilities identified. Most of those facilities had uh, landfills associated with them. Um, but they did ask us to participate in the program. It'll be interesting to see what we find. So, and that's what I have for. Um, cool. Any questions for the superintendent? Go ahead, Joe. Dave, based on that uh, article, which was very interesting, based on landfill sites and also uh, mill sites, um, and looking at those numbers in comparison to what we're putting out on a average. Do you have any thoughts on that? Um, obviously, the PFAS, for the audience, the, uh, <coughs> the numbers coming from a lot of the uh, 
sites with landfills or mills associated to them, their, their PFAS concentrations are in two, like 280, I think was one of the numbers that I saw, to, it, well into the 200s versus Scarborough's been averaging around 60, 65, 70. Um, and obviously the, the PFAS is leaching out of, of the landfill materials, so. Right. They, they, they're fairly confident that that's where that's coming from. Scarborough, on the other hand, would, you know, if you take the landfill sites out of the loop, uh, tends to be higher than uh, some of the other uh, facility uh, communities. Um, uh, Saco, um, Wells. Wells, you know, other bedroom type communities. Uh, why? I don't know. I, th I forget what your concentrations are. I think they're in the 30s. Thir no, 13. 13? Yeah, 20. Yeah, so significantly <laughs> different. So. Um, that's why they asked us to join into the study. One of the things that they're thinking about is car washes may have a high contributing factor to PFAS. We were talking about. And um, so. I could be wrong on the concentration, but at the end of the article, they had a link yeah. that showed all the results from the DEP report for the first six sampling rounds. It was, it was a very interesting uh, article that I responded back not to the group I apologize but uh, I did share it with my counterparts in the city that I work with and uh, um, I just wasn't sure if the state was tipping their hat at all towards what their thoughts were as they as we're progressing through something we're all trying to learn right now they, they really don't know they, they know that the landfills have higher concentrations than the we definitely there. seem to be in the medium yep versus a, a high. Yeah. Thank you. Another source of PFAS is septage. And Anson Madison had, I think, the highest concentration, not the highest loads going out, but the highest concentrations uh, because of the septage that they take at that plant. You know, much lower flows than, say, Bangor or KSTD up in Waterville less than a million gallons a day, but very high concentration. For the audience, I'll, I'll, I'll post uh, on our website the, uh, both the article and the link to the, the report. Helpful. I was just going to ask that. Do they anticipate a meeting um, after phase one and two are done to discuss what those values look like and possible causations? I would hope. <laughs> I, you know, I hope there would be some type of conclusions uh, drawn to it, and, um, and and with that, some ways to mediate or um, mitigate, mitigate um, the, the PFAS uh, getting out into the environment. You know, I think we would expect the uh, the landfill sites to have higher or. Or even mill town sites to have higher PFAS numbers, right? Just yes. based on, just based on that constant use or previous use. It's just interesting that the uh, the septic site, you know, for having more septic, based on the area where it's probably more farmland. Um, it's interesting how we're going to extrapolate those numbers. So it'll be interesting to see what they really kind of study in that. Well, septage is an interesting um, product because it is it, actually it's extremely it's highly variable and very dependent on the frequency that somebody pumps their tank. There are some people that will pump their tank once a year, and their their septage concentrations are very close to regular sewage. And you get people that don't pump their tanks for 15 years, and they're they're through the roof, and you know, it's, so they're highly variable. I just heard a lot of, uh, well, some interesting feedback from that article, and that uh, numbers without context can be kind of scary. So I <laughs> um, appreciate you, got, you forwarding on the information, and we're obviously in, it's still a state of unknown, so globally, not just as a district. In answer to your previous question, Joe, 
whenever there's a rule promulgated, there's always a public comment ahead of time. So whether it's a meeting or just you send in your comments to DEP before something is finalized, there's at least public input for that. No, uh, yes, thank you. And, and I think uh, superintendents uh, advocated well on behalf of the district and our practices, but uh, just good to put those numbers in context versus what uh, we're seeing statewide, not only nationally, but definitely statewide. And they were definitely within the lower median of the state so far, at least. And the state of Maine really is leading the national effort on this. Yeah. Um, so uh, the rest of the country and to some extent the world are really watching what unfolds here in this state. Um, so, you know, we are the leader. It's a, an appropriate hyper focus, but we're still trying to figure out how to deal with it. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Ben, you have a question. Well, I was just going to make a note that they, they also chose facilities based on existing plant expertise and staffing resources. So I think that was probably a big factor as well. Thank you. <laughs> Someone read, read the memo. Excellent. <laughs> um, any other questions for the superintendent? Yes, Mike. I do have one. When I was uh, going through the data, the effluent flow this month, was 1.63 mg mgd and then because typically i think we're like 1.3 or, or 1.4 mm -hmm. and then when i looked at the monthly operating report um i knew last month it was a wet month but we got 7.1 inches of rain was recorded at the plant wow rainiest that, june on record right so my, my point is with, with, with the amount of rain we got and our flow increased that little, um, I would say the system is pretty, pretty, tight. pretty tight. darn good. Perfect. Yeah. Yeah. Compared to some other facilities. That's all. Cool. Thank you, Mike. All right. Um, moving on. Correspondence. We already talked about the DEP report. Um, well, I did include in, in correspondence the uh, a copy of the um, DEP's uh, uh, PFAS sum of six report, which is April, dated April 2003. Um, let's see. Uh, sampling was commenced at 105 publicly owned treatment works at 19 private facilities as part of the study of the phase one study that we were just talking about. Uh, this is, this re is a, re a summary of that data collected, uh, and I did provide you with the cover page of that report and a link to the entire report. So um, as I say, I will post that link on our website, and if people want to move, um, peruse it, uh, th there's a lot of information there. And I'll also post the Bangor Daily News article there too. LD 718, an act to increase the beneficial reuse of construction and demolition debris. Oh, excuse me, I just moved on. I assume no, I'm, that's fine with me. It's still correspondence. All right. I am pleased to announce that the legislature did pass LD 718. Both Nick and I uh, went and spoke at the public hearing in support of this legislation. The passage of this act will reduce our sludge disposal costs by approximately $55 per wet ton. Currently, we are paying approximately $215 per wet ton. I'm using the approximate numbers because on top of that, in, folded into those numbers is um, diesel fuel and there's a surcharge that varies each month. So that, that's why the number goes up and up and down. Uh, I was glad to see that that passed and what, you know, what that does do is, is allow uh, Casella to still utilize some out of state um, oversized bulky waste to stabilize the landfill at Juniper Ridge, which will allow our sludge to, to be disposed of at Juniper Ridge and not be hauled up to New Brunswick where it was being disposed of prior to that. How soon will we be seeing our savings? 
Uh, we're starting to see it already. You are? Great. I, did. I, I didn't notice it on the bill I just signed, so <laughs> I wonder. <laughs> Actually, <laughs> officially, the end of July is the last bill with that escalator on it. So as Great. of August 1, we won't be charged that. Sorry to interrupt, Tom. Go ahead, Tom. Yeah, I have a real quick question. So the 215 is what was allocated when things went south. We had to pay an increase. Is that correct, Dave? Correct. Uh, I think there was, um, was it a, it was about a $55, $60 for what ton adder that they, they tagged on to our okay. contract. So we're, we're, are we back down to where we were approximately? Okay, good. That's all this question. Yeah. Any other questions? Thank you. Okay, moving on on business, we have a new business, Sawyer Road. Attaches a letter from the town uh, requesting the district support to explore funding opportunities to offset the cost of extending public sewer on Sawyer Road. I recommend approval with uh, the condition that the Scarborough Sanitary District fees, including capacity reserve fees, are not waived. Um, So uh, the town has uh, requested, just I'm going to summarize the letter, um, the district's help in exploring uh, 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 funding options to uh, service uh, the area on Sawyer Road that is not currently served by sewer. Um, the stream there has some flooding issues that ends up uh, flooding some of the septic systems and the result is there's some contamination of uh, the stream there, Millbrook during uh, those, those time frames. Uh, they were looking at uh, improving the drainage in that area and that project was gonna cost about $800,000 and they just thought it'd be better spent to um, uh, utilize that money to sewer that area. Um, would like our assistance in that. So. Dave, I have a question. So Sawyer Road, my understanding is at some point, did the school have a proposal for a piece of land that could be tied into the school off that uh, off that area? There's an extension. I thought Risberry had an option of buying a piece of land back there in that area that would extend, I believe it does extend onto uh, the downs on the back side with the school. I know the, I know the downs is looking at um, uh, or they're talking to the town about a lot for the school. I don't right. know exactly where it is. Right. In the so downs. this extension is only going to handle those those lots. We're talking about the lots specifically on okay. Sawyer Road. Uh, the downs is sewered, it's sewered in a multiple different um, ways. So okay. it's, um, that's been reviewed and studied already. So um, looking for approval to work with the town and exploring funding options. So they're looking to ask for money. What's that? So they want money from us? No, they have not asked us for money. And you know, I just want to make it, the, it has been the policy in the past. The district does not waive our capacity reserve fee for any town projects because it puts an undue burden onto a portion of the taxpayers in town versus the, the town as a whole supporting this entire project. So. They have not asked us for money, just for some assistance. Motion to approve. Second. Motion. Uh, who got the second? Tony. So, Ben and Tony. Yes, Joe. Do we know where that break is on the Sawyer Road? I believe it's... What's that? Pretty substantial, right? It goes from almost around the curb prior to Route 1. To Gorm Road? I, I didn't hear your quite your question. How far is the expansion they're looking for? Uh, the sewer. Are they looking to loop all the way to 114? Uh, no. Uh, there's sewer all the way. If you're coming from Route 1, there's sewer all the way to uh, mm, just short of Track View Drive. There's that just new development. Huh? Just before the corner. Right. Mm -hmm. Just before the corner. That's where it stops, right? Th 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 that's where it stops there. You go around the corner, and there's that new development that um, 
that was put in. Cottages on Sawyer is the name of the development. And it's, uh, there's a pressure sewer that goes, that services that project. So it's really not that big of a, no, a right. section. Less than I thought. All right, thank you. Feet. Yeah, I would, I would guess it's about 1,000 feet. feet. Missing. Thanks. So uh, still a no, question. No. Is it a town project to, to extend the sewer? So once the state is, you looked at it and it works, right? Mm -hmm. As far as the constructability of that, does the district have any liability to that construction? That would all be discussed okay. at some point in time, how that project would unfold. <clears throat> gotcha. None of those details have been laid okay. out. Gotcha. I mean, just to give a heads up for the newer members of the board, um, the town extended sewer of Haggis Parkway back, I think, 2005 or six time frame, somewhere around there. We managed the project, the town paid for it, and we used our engineers to design it and inspect it. Um, and that worked out really well. It was a good collaborative effort. And I think a model like that, following that model, would help in this situation. Thank you. Yep. Any other questions? Barring none, all in favor? None opposed. Thank you. All right. Um, Town Public Sewer Ordinance updates. As noted in that same letter uh, provided with item 7A from uh, Angela uh, Blanchett. Uh, the town is exploring increasing the distances that would require properties to connect to the sewer instead of relying on septic systems. Currently, as defined by the main subsurface wastewater disposal rules, the state requires a property to connect that are within 200 feet of the public sewer. Although this item doesn't require board action, I did want to express my concerns. Um, the, the economic impact on homeowners may be may be significant and far exceed the cost of repairing or upgrading a sewer a septic system. The distance requirement to the property line with no consideration, has no consideration of large parcels where a house could be a thousand feet back from the road and that it, it, you know, they would still be required to be sewered. Uh, this policy would result in using up collection system and treatment plant capacity to service areas that do not have any environmental concerns, thus removing capacity that could be better utilized for more environmentally sensitive areas in town. And then I, uh, consideration would have to be given to cost sharing regarding a homeowner who ends up extending the sewer into which other lots ultimately tie into. Uh, that was, uh, the, that's been dealt with in the past and it, it's not easy to manage. Uh, frankly, I think the town would be better served addressing areas of concern individually, like how the town uh, got sewered in the 80s, uh, when Higgins Beach, Proud Snack, Pine Point, Dunstan, Eight Corners uh, were sewered, and then how Higgins Parkway and, and now Sawyer Road are being addressed. So, you know, they're, they're addressed the, in the envir more in environmentally sensitive areas and then um, and thus preserving the capacity of the treatment plant. Question? Yes, go ahead, Jason. So I don't see in here, they're just asking for, to add the minimum, but n not necessarily say, stating how many feet? They, right. they didn't state it in this, but it was stated to me verbally. Oh, it was? Yeah. And what was that number? 1,000 feet. 1,000 feet. Wow. So 1,000 feet or less, just, I'm just trying to clarify for the public, 1,000 feet or less you'd be required to connect to the public sewer. Wow. That's significant. No kidding. <laughs> uh, and like yeah. 500 dollars a foot and better than that. Mm -hmm. Are you serious? Would our property okay. line still be at a normal spot? What's that? Our property line would still be at the normal spot, right? I mean, our termination is still on that municipal line, right? Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. You, you know, you're talking about what the, the district would own, but they would be responsible for extending the sewer. So, did, did they present this to you? It was talked about at a recent uh, meeting uh, with the town managers, <coughs> and you know, I did express my concerns. 
uh, with the department heads rather. I did express my concerns uh, with it, um, but where she mentioned it in this letter, I thought it appropriate that I, I bring it up and point it out yeah. to the board that this is being considered. Um, you know. Is, is the mic on there? I think it was. It is now. It doesn't suggest like a high target area. It just seems kind of canvassy. Am it's I very, not mistaken? It's very broad brush. Yeah, yeah, very broad brush. So I mean, I, I I do agree with you that like in some areas that maybe are notoriously wet or histor historically wet, that this might make sense. But I mean, I appreciate a conversation and look forward to that. But uh, from a homeowner being required to, um, I guess that remains to be seen. It, it, I agree with you 100%, Dave. I, I think the impact to the owners, second is, I think the use of better environmental project, those, those type of decisions work, right? I mean, oh, yeah. it, Scarborough overall has done that in, with their entire sewer system. Why change it now, I guess? I don't know. That's a big burden. And it, go, ahead, go ahead, Mike, you were first. So I know it varies from state to state, but I guess I wasn't aware that if you have a working septic system within 200 feet that you have to connect the public sewer. If you have a non-working one. So just if the system malfunctions. So, so, so only if the system fails would they have to hook up? Yes. Okay, so. okay, okay. If it, if, it by, if it passes by, it doesn't have to. You're right. If the pipe passes by. Correct. And your system, your septic right. system is functioning. still working, you don't have to hook. Correct. I, th I actually not quite sure. I think the language is kind of vague in that area, whether you're required. You may know um, more than I do. I don't think they have to. And I think the issue is... Uh, do they pay a fee still, even though they're not connected? That's no. see, that's the thing. I don't think they do. Well, it depends on what town, what district. So no, yeah, this, this, this district. Well, this district, we do not have the, uh, what do you call it, ability, ready to serve, ready to serve or yeah, ability to, to serve, serve yeah. um, charge for individuals that the sewer passes by. There used to be at one point in time, and um, there are so few that uh, the board chose to vacate that sunset. charge, yeah, sunset, sunset that charge, I guess. And, and, and just uh, went to commercial. I'm not familiar with the language either, but I would expect that it would make a difference whether it's a force main or a gravity sewer, mm -hmm. right? Yes. So if you had a force main that went within 200, 200 feet, feet you wouldn't be obligated. You wouldn't be no, obligated. Unless, of course, it's, it's a low-pressure, what's called a low-pressure low sewer pressure system sewer. that's designed yeah. for... Connections. Yeah. <clears throat> you know, it'd be interesting, Ben, you're a CEO. What's your take on that? I, I think the 200 foot rule is a sensible number. I think a thousand is a huge number. And uh, it'd be difficult to tell a homeowner, you know, 600, 800 feet away from a sewer line that they're not allowed to repair their septic system. They have to connect to public sewer. Seem, seems unreasonable in most cases. Sure, there's certain cases that there could be environmental concerns on a case-by-case -case basis, but to require it town-wide seems far-reaching. Dave, yeah, do you think we need to consult our legal before we go into any further discussions with the town about this? Um, what we can... Uh, order a resident to do? Say that again? Oh, and what we can impose on a resident to do? Well, it, it, the requirement really falls under the town ordinance. It's not, it's not our ordinance. Um, so it's, if the, it's the town's ordinance requirement. So um, I think at this point, it's very, it's just being talked about at this point in time. Yeah. I, you know, I, I think it would be best to um, memorialize uh, our concerns and um, convey them to the town 
and ask for a workshop or you know to, to further discuss this item because obviously we're connected at it at the hip but um, you know the, the treatment plant only does have a certain amount of capacity and if we did start extending the sewer it's going to go away um, yeah, if we were in for the money, we'd say, everybody hook on. But that's not the case. Yeah. I mean, we're looking at the greater interest for all residents and the, also the viability of the system. Environmental mm -hmm. impact. I appreciate you bringing it forward and look forward to the future conversations. I think a, pre uh, a future workshop would be probably beneficial to get if it gets to that point. And you're not looking for a motion of anything that's I, I just informative you know, at this point, correct? She addressed it. She she raised the issue in the letter. Um, uh, let's see. In addition, she says, uh, there is interest to update our town ordinance to increase mm -hmm. the distance that res residents and subdivisions are required to connect to the municipal sewer system instead of installing, repairing, or replacing septic systems. So um, where she brought it up there, I, you know, and I've had these conversations with Angela um, expressing my concerns. I, I thought it was prudent to bring it forward to the board and, and uh, suggest a workshop. I could see one example where that would be an undue burden, especially when that thousand feet included crossing the turnpike. That's no easy task. Oh. Thank you. Anyway, off and run on. Off and run. Lot one, mixed use building, the downtown center. On behalf of Cross Holds, Hold, Crossroads Holding LLC, Goral Palmer requested approval for a proposed mixed use building located along Market Street on lot one of the town center subdivision. Uh, the applicant previously received district approval for the subdivision on May 25th, 2023. The proposed mixed-use building is anticipated to include approximately 11,000 square feet of retail space, 4,700 of, of restaurant, and 42 residential units. I recommend approval with following conditions. Waste water flow allocation for typical sanitary waste based on the following. The retail would be 942 gallons per day, restaurant 3,360, and residential would be 8,400 gallons for a total of 12,702 gallons per day. Uh, <coughs> you get the cough button. <laughs> Uh, this project is fully subject to the capacity reserve fee. The current capacity reserve fee is $19.40 per gallon uh, and is adjusted monthly based on the ENR. The lot has an allocation of 160 gallons uh, per day and, that, uh, and consequently 12,542, excuse me, uh, 42 gallons are subject to the capacity reserve fee for a total fee of 243000 $314.80. Uh, capacity reserve fees will be paid upon application for the building sewer permits. Any flows more than this approval are subject to additional approvals and fees. A submeter will be required to measure the commercial flow. An increased trap permit application must be submitted for, uh, for model selection and sizing prior to installation of the proposed grease trap. And we do have a representative from Goral Palmer here. And I'm sorry, I for, I've forgotten your name. Trevor. Uh, Trevor. Yeah, it's Trevor Gettig from Goral Palmer. Before you do anything, we need a motion on the floor, please. Question for Thank second. you, Joe. Thank you, Jason. Now, um, and is it on? All right. Uh, I'm Trevor Gettig from Goral Palmer. Um, as Dave just mentioned, we are um, proposing a four-floor uh, mixed-use building um, located in town center within the Downs. It's located uh, on the corner of Scarborough Downs Road and Market Street. Um, as he mentioned, it's retail and restaurant primarily on the first floor, and then residential units on second, third, and fourth floors. Um, this will uh, connect to two services, one for the restaurant. Um, we do not have an end user at this time. 
um, and then the other retail and residential will connect um, to Market Street, and these flows will all be conveyed uh, through down to Pump Station uh, 27. As uh, Dave mentioned, we have a grease trap for the uh, potential restaurant. Um, at this time, it has not been sized uh, until we get an end user. We uh, request that we don't size anything until we can accurately predict what uh, will be in place. And then at that time, um, we will submit uh, sizing and seek uh, approval with capacity fee and everything you mentioned. So. Okay, any questions for Trevor? So the 2,000 gallon grease trap that's shown there is just a placeholder at this point? So uh, yes, at this time, we just don't have an end user, so it's hard to you know, get fixture counts and everything until we, we have a specific user. Hey Dave, I have a question. It's kind of weird because the capacity reserve fee, you had allocated 160 uh, gallons per day. And, and all of a sudden it went up to 12,000. So I guess my question is, why? Yeah, why? <laughs> when, when the subdivision was approved, um, there's a stub that was left for the lot um, and the, uh, when a stub is left for the lot, we do a minimum, um, allocation for the lot, Ooh. um, to knowing that something's going to be built there okay. as they left the stub versus just driving, driving by it. And, uh, so that's why, okay. but in the sizing of the pump station, they've looked at flow allocations you know, high, much higher flow allocations for the, than okay. than one sixty. Okay. They took they took the this into account. Okay. That's why there's one gap on one side. Say that again. That's why we're capping out one side to the other. Yeah. Um, I had a question. Did you do the review on these, or did we iron out? I did did the review. Okay. On these. You okay with them not putting a grease interceptor in now? Yep. Okay. They're doing all that site work. Um, but I guess, yeah, you can put Just it in there. Dig a hole. You can dig a hole. Works for me. Okay. Any other questions for Trevor or for Dave? All in favor? Unopposed. Thank you, Trevor. Thank you. Centrifuge pre-purchase option. Westphalia slash EA provided the attached price proposal for the pre-purchase of two centrifuges uh, for a value of $585,094. They also provided three purchase orders for the same unit. I have copies of the POs, but did not include them in the package just due to size. The average of the three was the 585094 Purchase, uh, the, pr uh, the pre-purchase could potentially shave about six months from the delivery date. Underwood is currently uh, completing a detailed review of the proposal. I actually had a uh, several hour meeting with GEA and uh, Westphalia on Monday. Uh, where we went through the details of the proposal and asked for some additional clarifications and um, uh, just making sure we're comparing apples with apples. Um, I, re I recommend authorizing the superintendent to execute a, pro a proposal that satisfactorily addresses Underwood's review comments and amend our fixed asset replacement account by 300000 to cover the anticipated 2023 payment terms for this item. Thank you, Jason. I think we got Mike on that one. Yep. Any questions for the superintendent? This was already oh. pre budgeted, correct? What's that? This is, if I remember right, we already budgeted for this expenditure. Now we're just looking for. Going ahead of the budget? Yes, correct. It, it's in our capital uh, replacement plan um, right now. It, it wasn't included in 2023 budget, but it was projected for 2024. Correct. 
but the expenditures would be this year? Part, that's or the, at least the, a portion, according to the portion, payment a portion plan. of the payment plan yes. would be. And that's one of the discussion in the items. They front loaded the, the payment. Mm -hmm. and to get uh, construction started. Well, they front loaded that they want their money, up, more money up front than I'm willing to give them. So. <laughs> So, so how does that look like for just budget cycles, just for transparency? You know, purchasing now, obviously it's good to get a, a better bargain, right? Mm -hmm. um, this dollar amount, how does it compare to what we'd already budgeted in general aspect? Oh, it's it's well within the budget of, my, uh, of, of the project, foreseen project. And so moving it ahead, there's a benefit of keeping it below the budget. Yep. And it doesn't obviously impact the current budget. Correct. Thank you. Any other questions? All in favor? None opposed? Oh. Uh, budget summary. Um, Six month budget summary? I lost my notes. I recommend approval. Oh, I'll put this in my notes. There you go. <laughs> Motion to approve. Thank you, Ben. Second. Thank you, Ruth. Any questions, comments? I looked at it last week sometime. It looked pretty good. Barring none, all in favor? None opposed. Okay. Public comments, there is no public, so we can't get any comments. Uh, trustee comments, we'll start with uh, Ben. Thanks to uh, the staff at the district for doing a great job, as Mike pointed out with the, the high Rainwater flows, the facility seems to be functioning really well. Uh, hope everybody's having a nice summer. Tony. Yeah, I just want to say that it's nice to get information from Dave. He does a great job with answering questions and telling us where things are and, and keeping us up to speed. I, that's really important, I think. I appreciate that. Thank you. Have Ooh. a great summer, guys. Mike? Um, looks like another successful month, um, and uh, thanks to the staff and in the day for another month well done. Cool. Jason. Uh, thanks also to the staff. Appreciate all the hard work that everybody's putting in on these hot days. We're finally having a summer. Appreciate all the work that everybody does, and uh, looking forward to hopefully working closely with the town on whatever this may bring for Sawyer Road, and hopefully we can help settle some environmental issues down there. Ruth. Ruth. Thank you very much for all the hard work you and your staff do, and thank you for um, providing information that even I understand. So I appreciate it. Because <laughs> I read this and I think, oof, I can't wait for the meeting. So thank you. <laughs> Joe. Uh, thank you. Uh, both the superintendent and Nick uh, for uh, speaking for LD 718 um, and advocating for that. Um, and I appreciate uh, you being a good advocate for the district and our, also our stakeholders and uh, keeping us informed of what's going on. Um, and uh, summer's finally here. I hope uh, everybody stays safe. There's been way too much tragedy for as much rain as we've had already throughout the state. Uh, I do appreciate all the work the staff's been doing. Um, and just wish everybody a good summer until the next time we meet. Cool. All right. Um, I don't have any comment tonight, so I'll ask for the final motion. Second. All in favor? We're done?